Thank you, and thank you for the nice introduction. Wow. Mm -hmm. The camera always makes me nervous. <laughs> As you know, we are here to talk about today water storage and purification. Now, I've given this class a lot, even in our steak. I've given this a lot, and an outsider steak, and I've changed it up just a little bit because as I've gone and spoken, I've decided water can be very confusing because there are a lot of components of water. So I've broken it down into four parts, and we'll talk about each of those. We're going to talk first about, uh, about what survival water is, what portable water is, water storage, and then water purification and filtration which, believe it or not, is huge, huge. Um, so we'll just jump right in, and we will start with survival water. Now, if you're reading your cheat sheets, you're going to know all these answers. I'm going to ask you a few questions. Um, survival water is if you had to leave your home, and you had nothing but whatever you could push, you could carry, you could pull, and that's what you had to live on, how much water would you need to take with you to survive? Now, typically, this is very short term. When we take our 72-hour kits, and you know, we don't call them 72-hour kits anymore. Um, 72 hours is, of course, three days. We have learned this lesson many times in the past. Um, help just is not always available within three days. It's going to take more than three days to either secure more supplies or to wait for help to get to us. Three days just is not enough. So the new standard, and I've heard some places now talk about 100 hour kits, which is about four days. The new standard is five days. If you have your emergency prep pack and it's only equipped for three days, think about increasing it to a five day supply. Okay, one of your most important things in items in your pack will be water. You can live about three minutes without air. You can live about three weeks without food. You can live only about three days without any water, um, as a general kind of standard. Um, so how much, if you're walking out of your house and all you have is that backpack, that 72-hour kit or that emergency prep pack that you've prepared, how much water do you need to put in it? How much will actually help you survive until you can secure more supplies or somebody can come and, and help you? Okay, this is actually governed by the U.S. Coast Guard. Many years ago when the, when the ships were coming across the ocean, they figured it was about three days before if, if any mishap happened and they were stranded on the ocean, it did take about three days for help to get to them. So it became mandatory. Um, that they have enough food and water for every crew member on the ship. So they did these studies to figure out what do humans really need to survive on literally just to keep you alive until somebody else can come and help you. Um, they figured that you need at least eight ounces a day to survive. Now remember, this is only short term. This is not long term. You cannot live long term on only eight ounces. But if you were in a dire situation and you only had uh, what was in your pack, you need eight ounces a day. So now times that by five days, you need 40 ounces of water in your pack. Now I, I store the water bottles, not this one, I do the 24 ounce water bottles with the sport top. And we have two of those in every kit for every member of our family, which means we have 48, uh, 48 ounces which were covered by our 40 ounces um, for our five-day five supply. While we're talking about that, how many calories do you need? Anybody know? The U.S. Coast Guard also governs that you need 800 calories. So when you plan and you pack your kit, do 40 ounces of water and do 4,000 calories, and you'll have a basic five-day supply of food and water to get you by. So that is um, survival water. If you don't have 40 ounces in your pack, go home and add 40 ounces. Now I called Arrowhead at one time and I said, well how long do your bottles last? And they say they guarantee them for two years for taste. But really what happens to this water bottle? Water can either evaporate or get contaminated. Really that's the only thing that 
makes our water undrinkable. Um, it really, they will guarantee it two years for taste. It will last much longer, really, because the way these are sealed, um, you know, it, it really, until the plastic starts to break down. I noticed in my bottles, they suction in, but water bottles are so easy to find. They're so cheap to buy. They're so easy to use. Rotate them every year. Go through your packs once a year. Just rotate them. If you want to let it go two years, that's fine. But uh, for survival water, your responsibility is to go home this week and make sure you have 40 ounces in your in your survival or in your emergency prep pack. Okay, so now let's change the scenario. Now we have to leave our homes. We have to evacuate, but now we can go by car. Okay, now we're not just limited to what we can push or what we can pull or what we can carry. Now we can actually load up our car. Now, who has portable water in their house or their garage? Anybody have portable water? Everybody needs to have some kind of portable water. The standard is that we need one gallon per person per day. So essentially, you need five gallons per person that's portable. Now, how much does it weigh? How much does five gallons weigh? It weighs 40 pounds. If you don't think you can lift 40 pounds by yourself into your car, store it in smaller containers. These containers come in all sorts of sizes. If you have to, store them only half full. You'll have to rotate them, you know, um, but store what you can lift. I actually, at one time when I was much younger and much stronger, um, this is 15 gallons. And I thought, oh, this will be great. And I loved it. it. had handles. So I thought, oh, you know, this is portable. Okay, I could move this. But for the life of me, there was no way this was going anywhere with me. So I got my son. He's on a mission now. But he was 12 years old at the time. He and I together could get this in the car. But I thought, if I was ever in a situation where I had to leave, by, and I, you know, was by myself, or I had to pack up the car, there's no way I would be getting this in the car myself. So store portable water that you can carry. Now, here are some ideas. Um, now, I, you guys have seen this because we have, we've, we've done these many times, but the bottom line is, is I still really love them. It's five gallons. It's 40 pounds. You saw me pick that up. I'm breathing hard. <laughs> it's, four, it's 40 pounds, but I can do it. If I had to get this into my car, I could do this. I'll tell you what I love about the Rocky Mountain water. It comes full. If you go and buy some of these containers, you have to go and you have to fill them yourself, which isn't hard. I just find that it's hard for people to do. <laughs> it's not a hard task, but rarely people do it. I have a funny story. I apologize if you've heard it before. I used to live in California, and I had, my, I had a little business there. Well, I lived on a cul-de-sac, and I got all of my neighbors um, these, you know, these big water barrels. They said, everybody needs their water storage. So when they had them, we had them for a few weeks. Well. Me and my family, we went out of town, we went to Utah, back-to-back -back earthquakes while we were in Utah. Mm -hmm. One on a Saturday morning, one on a Sunday morning in Southern California. They were small, there was no damage. We get back Sunday night. They come and knock at my door and they're laughing. Not one of them had filled their barrel. Not one. They said, we feel like the village idiots. <laughs> and so I just know in human nature, it's hard <coughs> to get your water barrels filled or your water containers. So why do I love this? Two reasons. One, it comes filled. That's my favorite part. Two, um, one of the most best, greatest sayings in emergency preparedness is indefinite shelf life. I love that phrase. Guess what? On this water from Rocky Mountain, it has an indefinite shelf life. If you keep it in a cool, dry place, which means don't let it freeze, don't let it get wet. You don't want the water to freeze. Of course, it expands. You might compromise the mylar bladder in there. And don't let it get wet. I've driven in my garage with snow on my car. It melts, and then it leaks on my garage. It leaks, got the boxes wet. Everybody knows what happens to cardboard. I went to pick it up, and the bladder inside just fell right out the bottom. So when they say cool and dry, they really mean don't freeze and don't get wet. Um, if you look here, oh, show you how strong I am again. Um, there is a little punch out right here. You can punch that out and there's a spigot. 